This video is all about bento grids, which are these awesome looking layouts where the elements stretch over multiple columns or rows. They are perfect for product landing pages and even dashboard apps. But do you know how to build one and how to make it responsive? It is actually easier than you think if you know which properties to use and which you should avoid. In this video, I'm going to teach you everything about it, so you can start building these layouts with only a few lines of code. But to get there, you need to understand how grid areas work. Let's say we wanted to create this layout. Then you can probably see how we need a CSS grid for this. We use grid template columns and grid template rows to create four columns and two rows. For simplicity, they are all 200 pixels big. But you could also use a more responsive unit like fractions, for example. I also use a gap of 1EM to see the individual boxes better. Right now, they are all displayed next to each other, but we can define their exact position in the grid if we name them somehow. Each box needs a name so that we can identify it later. For that, we use the grid area property. You can do this in CSS, but then you would have to address every box individually. So to save a few lines of code, you could also do this in HTML using the style attribute. This is usually done much faster, and since I don't plan on overwriting these values, we don't have to worry about specificity. The names for the grid area is just box1, box2, box3, and so on. Now that every box has a name for its grid area, we can now decide how big these grid areas should be. In other words, across how many columns or rows they should stretch. And for that, we use the property grid template areas. And this is really where all the magic happens. On that property, we can define strings. One string is one row in the grid. Remember, this grid design over here is the goal. So in the first row, we need box one, box two, box two again, and box three. Now we write another string. I'm going to do this in a new line, but we could also write everything in one line of code. In the second row of the grid, we need box one again, box four, box five, and box five again. And in the browser, that should already give us the first grid of the video. So for a beginner, that might be a bit tricky to see. But the grid template areas property contains the information where exactly each box should go. Maybe you'll see it with a bit of video editing. Every string is one row, and the spaces inside the strings separate the columns. And every box has a grid area which serves as their identifier. The cool thing about this property is that we can now change the layout very easily by just changing these strings. For example, I can make box 1 very big by putting it here and here, and make all the other boxes a bit smaller over here. And this will now give me a completely different layout by just changing one tiny thing. And you can probably see how powerful this can be when thinking about responsive web design. For a smaller display, we just have to come up with a design that is a bit thinner. That means we have to rearrange the grid areas so that all the boxes fit properly. Inside a media query, I changed the values for the grid template columns and grid template rows. We could use a 3x3 grid for example. Later I will show you how to make this completely automatic. And now, in grid template areas, I create a design that looks somewhat like this. We are just rearranging the five grid areas for the five boxes so that we have a 3x3 layout. This is now a bit thinner and perfectly suited for tablet devices. And of course, the same thing goes for mobile screens. I can do the same thing again, but this time with only two columns and four rows. So depending on the screen size, we can always change the grid template areas property to create a grid layout that fits properly. But you might have noticed one annoying thing. We always need to change grid template columns and grid template rows. But I've found a way where we don't need to change these properties. There's a solution where you only adjust the grid areas and the columns and rows will follow automatically. Because technically, that information is already contained in grid template areas. So I will remove grid template columns and grid template rows everywhere and only at the beginning, up here in my grid container. I will use different properties, called grid auto columns and grid auto rows. These properties will now create an implicit grid. That means here we define how big an automatically created column or row should be. They're all 200 pixels. By using these properties, we don't need to specify the columns and rows anymore since they will be created automatically. I'm not saying that this is the better way. If you really want to be 100% sure and you want more control over the individual columns and rows, then you will be better off with grid template columns and grid template rows in the media query. But if you prefer a shorter and more automatic way, then do it like this with an implicit grid. Now there are a few things to consider going forward. Right now I'm using a fixed unit. You could also use the unit EM, which is a bit better, but with both of these units, you're limiting the size of the boxes. If that is the goal, then that's of course okay. This could be useful for an image gallery, for example. But the moment you start filling these boxes with content, then things can get messy if you limit the size. This is why we have to make a decision. Do you want to hide overflowing content with overflow hidden and make sure the grid stays in place perfectly, or do you want to have an adaptive grid that resizes itself based on the text content. 
For that, you can use the value auto or one fraction for the automatic rows. But what is the difference? The value auto is dependent on the text content. Here, if there is no content or padding, then there is no row. If there is more text content, the height of the row will adjust automatically. But I think this will make it really difficult to balance the layout, because now the content has to be balanced perfectly to make this grid look good. The other option for an adaptive grid is the value one fraction. If you use one fraction, then all the rows, they're all the same size, and for me that works a lot better. That means if I start filling the first row with a bit of content and it grows bigger, then the other rows will also grow accordingly. But just a general recommendation here, don't fill these bento grids with too much text. I believe these grids work way better with images and cool graphs, because most of the time the goal is to make a product look awesome and not to present a big amount of information. If you learned something interesting in this video, then I'm sure you will also enjoy watching this video right here.